History of treasure hunting. Locations of gold and silver mines could only be found by the help of simple metal rods at the times when electronic devices were not yet invented. After the continent America was discovered, Spanish mine prospectors who came there have found some gold and silver ores with the help of the roads and have operated them for long years. The first detectors were developed around World War II in order to detect landmines. In the following years, with the advancements in electronics, people have started to develop devices that could detect precious metals and mines from a distance. Initially, these devices did not have any indicators on them. As technology advanced, detectors with analog indicators and then with digital LCD indicators have been produced. In the last years, with very important advancements in electronics, devices with color TFT displays are now being produced. The Mega Scan Pro device that you have is the latest and most advanced model of these devices. It has five programs as a long-range locator and two programs as a magnetometer, having a total of seven programs. In its electronic circuit, the latest advanced ARM processors and a large 4.3 inches color TFT display are used. The main body of the device is made out of durable and high quality ABS plastic.
System Mode Selection screen. Program Selection screen. Program Loading screen. Long Range Locating screen. Magnetometer Signal screen. Actions. Important. Metal objects such as gold, silver, etc., and any electronic devices such as mobile phones, electronic watches, music players, etc., should not be present on the operator who would use the detector. Also, because there could be an interaction from distance, the device should not be used closer than 40-50 meters around 150 feet, to such electronic devices and cell towers. Otherwise, there might be a faulty result in searches. While searching for a target, other people should not be in front of the operator. Gold, silver objects and electronic devices that could be present on these people might lead to faulty results. Because your locator is made for buried targets, non-buried gold, silver, etc., targets that are far away will not cause negative interference. Long-range locator operating practices. Balance search practices with the device. Attention. You do not have to turn on the device while conducting these exercises. These are only done to get used to holding the device. The moving module where the antennas are connected rotates on a sensitive bearing and it has about 180 degrees of turning capability. In order for the search to produce healthy results, the operator must get used to holding the device in balance. The operator must hold the device in a position where he comfortably uses the device and he should use his surroundings too that the device would not shake and its balance will not be lost. The scanner antennas are fully opened after the scanner antennas, the probolic antenna and the power tube are connected. The device is held at chest level with the antennas bent down 3 to 5 degrees to the ground. If you stand towards the area you would search, open your feet to the left and right, hold your arm still and search by moving your hip. You will gain and maintain balance easier. It will be beneficial to conduct more than one search in the same area in order to understand whether you are on a right target track. Your device has stronger detection on older buried targets compared to newly buried targets. According to tests that have been made in years and the results of treasure prospectors, the longer the buried target stays on the ground, the stronger the detector will detect and the locating could be done from longer distances or deeper targets. In newly buried targets, even the target itself is old, it is not possible to have a strong detection. If you wait 3-5 days after burying gold, silver for your trials, you would see that your locator would have a stronger attraction. After you are sure that you can comfortably conduct the searches in balance, it is now time to practice for target determination. At this point, you can start target determination practices on the targets that you have buried. One. First, make sure that the battery of the device is fully charged. If not, first charge the battery. 2. Connect the parabolic antenna, telescopic scanner antennas and power tube of the device. Be sure that the antennas are fully fitted. Secure the screw cap of the power tube while not being very tight. 3. Bury gold, silver or bronze objects on the ground without wrapping them with anything like a plastic bag. Because it is a newly buried object, in order to provide conductivity with the soil, pour some water on the burial area. If you wait 3 to 5 days after burying the objects, you will see that your locator would have a stronger attraction. Operating the device. 
one. Turn on the device by pressing the on-off button. After the brand and model screens, the language selection screen will show. Choose your desired language using the up, down and left, right arrows and press enter. Mode selection screen on the language you have chosen will show. You would not have to choose the language every time you turn on the device since it would hold your selection on its memory. 2. Using the arrows. Choose either the long range locator of magnetometer mode and press enter. 3. If you have chosen the long range locator mode, the program selection screen will show. According to the object type, gold, silver, etc., you would like to search, choose the program and press enter. The program you have chosen will start to load and the searching screen will show with the widening waves. 4. On the left of the screen, the range value and on the right of the screen, the depth value will be seen. While searching in a close area, if you do not want to see the far targets, you can decrease the range value with the down arrow button. This will also lead to a decrease in the depth value. You can increase the range with the up arrow. 5. After waiting for a couple of minutes, you can start searching. 6. You can see the battery charge level from battery indicator on the upper right corner of the screen. Locating the target. Choose the search program after you turn on the device. Wait 2-3 to three minutes after the loading is complete. Touch the antennas to the ground for a couple of seconds for initialization. In order to minimize the deviations that could be caused by the magnetic field of Earth, all field searches should be made in the direction of north to south. Turn the area that you will search by having your back at the north direction. Search there from left to right and right to left. The antennas will be locked on the target during the search. Even though you turn the device, the antennas will stay on the position where they show the target. Repeat this procedure until you are certain of the situation. The attraction on the device could represent a large target that is far or a smaller target that is closer. In order to determine target location, New searches from at least three different points should be done by changing your place. Mark the target path when the antennas are locked on the target by the help of the laser beam using stones or drawing a line on the ground. You can also benefit from natural reference points like trees, rocks, etc. After the first determination, move 5 to 10 steps to the left or right. Search again. The antennas should again lock on the target. After marking this target path too, roughly mark the intersection of the first and second target path. Again move 5 to 10 steps and find a new path to the target. The target you are searching for should be around the intersection point of these three paths. If there are two or more targets close to each other in the same area, you can conduct closer searches and determine these target locations separately. It is possible that an area with scattered small targets is found after the searches. The buried objects could be collected faster by searching the target area with a regular coil detector. Target depth measuring. On the top of the target point, insert the probes of the deep master around 8 cm into the ground. Turn the device to 5. Choose the target program from the main unit. Wait for 3-4 minutes. Stand over the target and observe the antennas turning to one side. Observe the antennas becoming straight when you walk away from the target. Stop when antennas turn again to the sides. This is the second signal point. The approximate target depth is the distance between two signal points having 45 degrees difference from the target. Take several depth measurements from different second signal points to measure the depth more accurately. The digital voltmeter on the Deep Master shows the voltage of its battery. It could result to wrong detection so the sensor should be held as perpendicular as possible to the ground. 
You can increase and decrease the magnetometer sensitivity according to the train conditions using the left and right arrows. The headphone sound level could be adjusted with the button on the cable. The switch between the M1 and the M2 modes push slightly on the button located on the right upper corner of the control panel. Note. You must always make sure to target accuracy after the appearance of a signal on the screen. You must reset the device outside the target place and that by clicking length on the button in rightmost of the control panel. If repeated the same signal this means that 100% real target.